Hello and welcome back to the second part of section 3.2. Today we're going to look at the natural log function. And the natural log function looks something like f of x equals. Now you guys probably remember more like this, which is the ln of x. But it really means the log base e of x. So what we can do, if we say y equals the natural log or ln of x, we can rewrite this as e to the y equals x. And that comes from this right here. Remember, e, the base of your log raised to this up front, and f of x is really y, should give you x right here. And one other thing I'd like you to know is I do want you to pay attention to this fact right here. You cannot take the log or natural log of a negative number. So this has to be a number greater than 0. When we graph our exponential function, or f of x equals e to the x, we get something that looks like this. And remember, inverse functions reflect over the line y equals x. So when I take this graph here and I reflect it over this line, I end up with my natural log function, which looks like this. So for example 5, we're going to evaluate the natural log of x plus 1 when x equals 73.25. So in my calculator, I'm going to type in the natural log of 73.25, close your parentheses, and then add 1. Please make sure to close that parenthesis on your calculator because that will, that is a different, or there is a difference between 73.25 and 74.25, which is what your calculator would assume if you don't close your parentheses right here. So when we type that into our calculator, we end up with, 5.2939, and if I do part B, we end up with a natural log of 0.4, close your parenthesis, plus 1, and when we do this, we end up with 0 0.0837. And just like we had with logs, we also have properties of natural logs. Now the natural log of 1 is 0 because e to the 0 is 1. Natural log of e equals 1 since e to the first equals e. And if you don't remember, we really have y equals the log base of e of x. So I'm going to take this right here, raise it to the power of y, and then that's going to give me my x value. So that's where I'm getting this e to the 0, e to the first, and so on. So then we have the natural log of e to the x. Well, because e and natural log are inverses of one another, they're actually going to cancel themselves out. So these will cancel out and leave you with just x, just like e to the natural log of x will cancel out and also leave you with x. And then we have the same property, too, that said, or that proves that we're 1 to 1, that says if the natural log of x equals the natural log of y, then we know that x must equal y. So for example 6, let's go ahead and simplify these. Right away, I see that I'm taking the natural log of e, so I know these are going to cancel out, and that's going to leave me with just the 1 third. And if I look at part b, I have the natural log of 1, well, the natural log of 1 is really 0, so I end up with 15 times 0, which still gives me 0. e to the natural log of 8, e and the natural logs are going to cancel out, and that's going to leave you with just the 8. And in part d, I'm taking the natural log of e, so that's going to cancel out and leave me with a 1, and I still have my 6 in the denominator, so I end up with 1 sixth. And again, these are just using the properties from the previous slide. For example, 7, we want to find the domain. Now, domain is going to remember is our restriction on the x values. And anything that we plug inside of this set of parentheses here has to be greater than 0. So to identify your domain, let's take that stuff that's in the parentheses. So x plus 3, set it greater than 0, and then solve for x. So x then is going to be greater than a negative 3. So your domain then could be all real numbers greater than a negative 3, 
or you can write it in interval notation. And since we can't have a zero in here, I have to make sure that it's greater than and I don't include that negative three. I'm gonna use parentheses and go from negative three to infinity. So either one of these would be a good representation of the domain. Now let's do the same thing for part B. This time I'm gonna take what's in there, the three minus X, set that greater than zero. Solve for X, so X is going to be less than three. So I can either write it like this, or I can put it in interval notation and say that it's going to be from negative infinity to three. And again, I don't want to include either side, so I use the parenthesis. And for this last part here, we have f of x equals the natural log of x cubed. So I'm just going to take x cubed, set it equal to or greater than zero. When I solve for this, if I take the cube root of both sides, I end up with x is greater than, and the cube root of zero is still zero. So I have x is greater than zero, or you could write this as zero to infinity. Either way, um, it doesn't matter to me. And this actually concludes the second part of section 3.2. If you have any questions, please let me know in class tomorrow. Thank you and have a good night.